Okay, then let's move forward. Let's review what is superconductor. Two very important things. When the temperature goes down, our resistivity will certainly drop to zero. Yeah, but we can call this something called perfect conductor. It might not be superconductor, not the uh, rigorous definition of superconductor. Another criteria is the so-called Meissner effect. That is going to repel any magnetic field, no matter uh, regardless of the history of the magnetic field. If at the above the critical temperature, before you become a superconductor or perfect conductor, you have magnetic field going through this body, as the temperature gets lower, if it's a perfect conductor, you are not going to repel the magnetic field. It will stay inside. But for a superconductor, it will repel. Okay, so this is a very important testing criteria for the uh, superconductor. Yeah. Sorry, another question. Um, so, because last time I remember we were talking about how we see the uh, critical yeah. magnetic field and then current aren't inherent to, mm -hmm. like, they're so they're, like, dependent upon each other, they're not inherent to the material. Yeah. But is the critical temperature inherent to the material? Because I always thought it was. Uh, I think it is not. Uh, that maybe I need to check, but at least it depends on the pressure. Right. But how do I say? Of course, you can say the pressure actually changed the structure, so that is not the same material, right? Uh, I forgot to check. How about let me this time I check carefully, right? But at least the current and the uh, magnetic field they are interrelated. If you have a larger magnetic field, you have a smaller critical current, right? Okay, good, good question. Yeah, sorry. Now, then we go to say, okay, we accept that we have the superconductor. So what is the reason, right? It is a very difficult theory that warrants a Nobel Prize. And uh, of course, I don't understand if you ask me go through the math. It's possible we can understand, but it's very complicated. Uh, but we need to understand some basic thing is that the electron in the superconductor, they pair up at low temperature. Right, very strange, right? People, it's difficult for people to accept at that moment why uh, two negative charge will pair up, right? Will pair up. And the reason is because they have the phonon as a mediation, right? So you can imagine you have a nucleus which is positive. Maybe it kind of attracts this electron a little bit and then attracts another electron a little bit to bring them together. It's just like uh, you have two friends, they, they, don't, they don't get along with each other, right? You treat this friend, say, hey, he, uh, the other friend is a good guy, good girl, uh, and then talk to another, right? Kind of bring them together, which makes sense in this sense, right? But of course, there, there's a very rigor, rigorous theory behind it, right? So we accept that they are paired together. They are paired together also by the fact that they have opposite momentum and spin. So if you look at the so-called Fermi surface, you will find that they are at different location in the momentum space. We won't go to that, but you just uh, agree that they have opposite momentum and spin. And um, you may feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable if you look from particle point of view, what well, their opposite momentum, they're going to the opposite direction. How do you pair it, right? But we're talking about the wave. Right, so you get the momentum by doing the momentum operator. Uh, so, so it's delocalized, right? It's not a point uh, for the electron. But just accept it. The most important thing is because they appear, their spin becomes zero. So they change from fermion, which is, has a half spin, to boson, which has the integral spin zero. So when they are fermion, we know they obey the Pauli exclusion principle. If you have a spin of half, uh, two, uh, three half, five half, you will obey this exclusion principle that you cannot occupy the same quantum state, just like the hydrogen atom, one S orbital. You can only have two electrons, and they need to have the opposite spin. Otherwise, they are at the same quantum state, right? That's you fill up the atoms. And you will obey this Fermi direct statistics. So if you go to very low temperature, the best is that every level is filled up by one electron. Every state is filled up by one electron, right? 
But if you are boson, you obey the so-called Bose-Einstein distribution. And the equation has only have one difference, plus one instead of minus one, and that makes a big difference. Because think about that. If the energy is at the Fermi level or at the chemical potential, right? Then this becomes uh, zero. One minus one, then this becomes one. Then you have infinite probability, right? Not probability, I mean, uh, the, the distribute function, you can just fill in as much as you want. Infinite uh, room for you to fill in on the same state. At the same time, if you have a low temperature, any energy higher than this chemical potential is almost zero because if T is very small and this is positive, this is not infinity, right? Then, uh, yeah, this is not infinity, right? Then one over infinity is uh, zero, right? So you almost cannot fill up any other thing. Here, even it is at low temperature, you still fill up to the chemical potential, right? So then what does it mean? All of them fill up in the ground state. You don't have state be below the uh, Fermi level because it becomes negative. It doesn't make sense, right? So uh, all fill up at the ground state. So I have 10 to the power 23 electron in per cm cube of metal. I also about 20 to the power 23 Cooper pairs, even they pair divided by two, still the same order of magnitude. All these objects have the exactly the same wave function. So this is a macroscopic quantum object, right? They all describe by the same wave function, right? So all Cooper pairs are at the same state. And state is what? Wave function or vector. They are exactly the same. Because I'm allowed to do that now, they are boson. Is this okay? All right, so they describe by the same wave function. So then I can come up with just say that, okay, you know, this 10 to the power 23 electron per cm cube can be written as a collective object with its magnitude times a phase because anything is just a complex number, right? Uh, the most general wave function is just a complex number. Of course, it can depend on the location, right? Now we don't think about the time. But by quantum mechanics, again, what is the meaning of psi square? It is the probability I can find the electron, right? Or the Cooper pair, we should start saying Cooper pairs now. So this must be equal to the density of the Cooper pairs, which is about 10 to the power 23 per cm cube, right? That's the amount of electron you have in a solid. Do you see this? I'm talking so much, it's just to tell you that this is not a phenomenological or a, a, a hand waving wave, right? Which is valid because uh, some formulas use this to describe the superconducting uh, Cooper pairs. Okay, that's how I describe it. Now, let's just uh, understand that they abide together due to the phonon, right? So they can we can break them also. Basically, what we want to say is, well, you have electron going up, spin up, electron spin down. This whole thing is a Cooper pair. Let's call this CP. But you still can break them. If you, if you apply an energy to it due to too large of the current or temperature too high by a delta energy, then you are going to get into two electrons separates electron. We call this a quasi-particle, right? We won't study this much, but in reality, in every superconductor, because they are not at absolute zero, you will have this quasi-particle, which means just the electron, okay? And this delta is the so-called gap energy, very small. And you can imagine, 
your KT must be smaller than delta. The temperature needs to be small, right? Delta is a very small number, right? At room temperature, they all broken. That's why you don't have superconductor. That's why you need to cool them very low at very low temperature. Then you will get a superconductor because you need to maintain your energy less than delta, right? And by the way, we all talk about high temperature superconductor and you will find that those high temperature superconductor, right, more than 100 Kelvin are some very complicated material and they are actually, they actually have very low resistivity at room temperature. A high resistivity, sorry. So the more the if you're very conductive at the room temperature and you 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 can you become a superconductor at low temperature, your critical temperature usually is higher. And that is because it has more electron phonon interaction. Right? Because when you have a high resistivity, it also means that your lattice scattering is more. The electron and the atom has more interaction. And to have a superconductor, ironically, you actually want to have more lattice and electron interaction. Think about that if you have a material that doesn't have any interaction between the electron and the phonon, the nucleus, you won't have a superconductor. Just because of the Cooper pairs theory is mediated by phonon. If you don't have this, you don't have superconductor. Right? So all those high TC superconductors usually have a very uh, pretty resistive uh, lattice. Okay. 